Hey everyone, one question that I keep getting is, Sahil, can you tell us the best mutual funds for long-term investment? So in this video, I'm going to tell you three best mutual funds for next 10, 20 years. This video would be useful for both existing mutual fund investors as well as new investors. But before I get to that, I want to highlight two biggest pain points of every mutual fund investor. So I keep getting the question that Sahil, the mutual funds I've invested in is not giving good return. Should I switch? And if yes, where should I switch? Then second pain point is there are many categories of mutual funds. How many mutual funds should I have in my portfolio? So in this video, I'll solve the entire confusion from investment in mutual fund, not just for next year, but for rest of your life. I've divided this video in three parts. First, I will discuss the pain point one and pain point two. And finally, I'll conclude with best mutual fund. All right, let's get started. Now, majority of retail investors invest in mutual fund based on past one to three years of returns. So they pick the mutual fund that has generated highest return in last one to three years. But the problem with this approach is there is no guarantee that if a mutual fund has generated highest return in the past, it would continue to generate highest return in the future. So what happens is after investing in mutual fund based on past performance, in a couple of years, majority of retail investors realize that their mutual fund is not the best performing mutual fund anymore. In fact, in many cases, the best mutual fund in the past becomes an underperformer. And retail investors think of selling those mutual funds and buying funds that are doing well during that point in time. But there is no guarantee that after selling your mutual funds, the new fund where you will invest will end up giving high return. So you will face the same question of selling the fund and buying the new fund every time. In this process, majority of investors would end up generating even lower return than the market. I'll give you an example. Few years ago, Excess Blue Chip was the top performing mutual fund and every retail investor wanted to invest in Access Blue Chip fund. As a result, it saw a huge investment and ended up being the number one active mutual fund in large cap category with an AEM of 36,870 crore. However, in last one year, it is the worst performing mutual fund in large cap category with rank 29 out of 29. In two year, it is ranked 27 out of 27. In three year, it is ranked 23rd out of 26. And majority of Axis Blue Chip Fund investors are confused about what to do. Should they stop investing in this fund and switch to other fund or continue their SIP? By the way, I've already created an in-depth video on why Axis Blue Chip Fund is underperforming. Likewise, there is another popular fund, Parag Parik FlexiCap Fund. Currently, it is the third largest mutual fund in FlexiCap category. And again, it has the same story like Axis Blue Chip. At one point, this fund was the top performing fund. But in last one year, this fund is ranked 26 out of 28. So the moral of the story is that there is no fund that consistently remains among top performing fund for a long time. And majority of retail investors invest money in equity mutual fund for long term goal. It means there is high probability that the fund where you are currently investing your money would end up as an underperformer. Please note that here we are talking about active mutual fund. And if you have been following the mutual fund industry, you would know that off late it is getting very difficult for active mutual fund to beat the index. There was a recent study that said 60% of active mutual fund underperformed the benchmark in long term period. So forget about generating higher returns. Majority of investors in active mutual fund end up generating lower return than benchmark in the long term. Hence, the best solution to this problem is index funds. Now I have already discussed multiple times in the past about why index funds are better than active mutual funds. So I don't want to get into the details. You can check my previous videos. Now, which is the best index fund for investment? Just hold on for now. Let me discuss second pain point and then I will tell you the best index fund. By the way, now you can also listen and watch my podcast on Spotify for free. My podcast name is Personal Finance 101 with Sahil Badvia. In case you are interested, I provided the link below. Now, there are many subcategories within equity mutual fund. You have large cap, mid cap, small cap, flexi cap and so on. And each category has many mutual fund options. So how to build a mutual fund portfolio? Should you add all the categories? And how much funds should you have within each subcategory? Also, some people ask that since they have a long term financial goal, they can also take higher risk. So should they invest more in mid cap and small cap index? Well, I did a research and compared four indices large cap, mid cap, small cap and flexi cap, which is a mix of large, 
mid and small cap that essentially is your nifty 500. In case you have no clue about various indices and how mutual funds really work, I would strongly recommend my course where I've covered every aspect of mutual fund along with stock fundamental analysis and personal finance foundation. Okay, let me show you the results of my analysis. So this is the data of Nifty 500, which is available from November 2006. Since then, the index has generated a return of 393%. For the same period, Nifty 50 return is 381%, Sensex return is 356%, BSC mid cap index return is 355%, and NSC small cap return is 351%. If I summarize, since November 2006, Sensex has generated a return of 356%, Nifty returns are 381%, Nifty 500 returns are 393%, BSC mid cap returns are 355% and BSC small cap returns are 351%. Now this is very interesting data. A lot of people have a misconception that mid caps and small cap generates much higher return than large cap index. But the data suggests that there is not much difference in the return in the long term. Yes, in the short term there can be a difference but not in long term. The simple reason is mid cap and small cap funds are more volatile. So during bull run, they jump a lot and during bear market, they fall a lot. For example, during post COVID bull run, while Nifty jumped 126%, mid cap index jumped higher with 161% return and small cap index jumped highest with 228% return. But the same small cap index tanked 52.7% during January 18 to March 20, while Nifty return in the same period fell to 25.8%. So past 10-15 years of data clearly suggest there is not a crazy difference in the returns between large cap, mid cap and small cap index in the long term. Yes, there can be a sharp difference at individual stock level but at least not at index level. With this, now let us look at the best mutual fund for next 10-20 to 20 years. Based on our analysis, we have concluded two points. First, no single active mutual fund remains a top performer on a consistent basis. And if you invest in active mutual fund, you will always face the dilemma of switching the fund. Hence, the best mutual fund for investment is a low cost index fund where you don't have to worry about selecting the best fund. You will fetch returns similar to the market. And second, data suggests that in the long term, there is not much difference in return from various indices across your large cap, mid cap and small cap category. Hence, the best option is to go with a nifty 50 based index fund where you will invest in the top 50 companies of the country in the same exact allocation as per their weightage. And this index itself is dynamic where a poor performing fund would exit from the index and better performing fund would enter into the index. So index itself will take care of rebalancing. Hence first mutual fund in your portfolio should be a nifty 50 based index fund. Now within nifty 50 there are multiple index funds. So how to differentiate between them? Basically, there are two parameters to shortlist the index fund, expense ratio and tracking error. Lower the expense ratio, better it is, and lower the tracking error, better it is. Again, I'm not getting into the details of expense ratio and tracking error as I've already covered it in my previous videos. Hence, opt for index fund with low expense ratio and low tracking error. Although please understand that since the index fund simply replicate the index, there won't be a sharp difference in the returns of index fund. So just opt for any index fund from a reputed fund house. That will be your mutual fund number one. By the way, if you want some exposure in next 50 companies, then you can also consider Nifty next 50 index fund, but it is optional. Now the catch with Nifty 50 index fund is that it only include the top 50 companies. What if you want exposure in mid cap or small cap companies? Ideally, there should be an index fund that replicate the top 500 companies of India and invest across your large cap, mid cap and small cap. But the problem is some of the stocks in mid cap and especially in small cap still have liquidity challenges. Hence, index funds for mid cap and small cap and flexi cap category are not popular in India yet. And that's where if you want to have exposure in mid cap and small cap, it is better to opt for an active mutual fund in this category. Now sometimes you will find large caps more attractive, sometimes mid cap and sometimes small cap. So it gets very confusing about where to invest and how many mutual funds to have in the portfolio. That's where I would recommend investing in a flexi cap category where the fund manager would invest across your large cap, mid cap and small cap category based on market sentiment and valuation. Within flexi cap, one of my preferred pick is Parag Parikh flexi cap fund as it also gives you some exposure in US based fund. 
Although currently Indian mutual funds are not allowed to invest in US stock market as they have breached the limit of $7 billion from SEBI. And this limit is not revised yet. Hopefully this limit would be revised soon. Now I know that this fund has been an underperformer but it is mainly because it had exposure in US stock and they fell down badly. But for long term it is a great pick. So second stock you can consider is Parag Parik Flexi Cap Fund. Currently it has an expense ratio of 0.76%, fund size is 27,712 crore and it has got exposure of 88.4% in equity and within that it has got 71.9% exposure in Indian equity and 16.49% in foreign equity. Within Indian equity it has got 58.8% exposure in large cap, 3.4% in mid cap and 8.9% in small cap. Please note that don't just go with past return. In the long run, this fund should do very well. And third fund would also be from FlexiCap category. I would prefer either Excess FlexiCap or Quoted FlexiCap or SDFC FlexiCap. All three fund houses have an established track record in the past and you can pick any of them. So if I conclude, the three best mutual funds include number one, Nifty 50 index fund and it could be from any of the fund house including UTI, SBI, Kotak, SDFC, Excess, Navi, etc. Since all of them replicate the same index, there won't be a big difference in return. Next two fund you can pick from flexi cap category where fund manager himself decide the allocation between large cap, mid cap and small cap based on market condition. So my second pick would be Parag Parik flexi cap fund and third pick would be Excess flexi cap, Kotak flexi cap or SDFC flexi cap, any one of them. With this, you will be sorted with your mutual fund investment for the next 10, 20 years. But please note that this is not a tip. Make sure that you do your own research before investing your money. And if you find this video useful, do share it with your friends. I'll see you next video. Till then, take care.